Hey, he's back, everybody. I'm back. The back. Bl- the bloke with the most, the <laughs> big chapu. <laughs> what else we got? Where are you getting these names from? Is this is this British slang right there? Since you're so world traveled, huh, DK? I th- I think so. Yeah, we can call you the beef eater. How the about beef that? eater. Hey, man. The uh, it's so many different ones. I guess we could. I am the London Bridge. I am Royal Court, DK. Whatever you want to call me now, you know, that's where I, I am. How are you feeling today? You recovered? I am. I ain't gonna lie. I'd have, I'd have been worth nothing yesterday. I, you said it, and I was just like, you. of course, you know me, power through guy, right? No, I needed yesterday, man, more than you know. Of, of an eight-hour flight, I probably slept about an hour and a half on the way back, and that yeah. doesn't bode well. Yeah, I can't, I can't sleep at all on airplanes. I just can't do it. <laughs> You can't, man. It, it, it's so much, especially that long distance, uh, by the way. And by the way, you know, from down south, we had to fly up and cross over New Jersey. We didn't fly across Charlotte or any. We no, went no, no. north straight and up. over. Yeah, it's always like that. Yeah, it's, straight up. This is new to me, DK. I never paid no. attention to this. Yeah, when you, I, I had to fly to Tokyo once with the Penguins, right up over the Arctic Circle, straight line. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Rotation of the earth is what I'm getting from this. Uh, I guess yeah. it's a football show. It's a football rotation <laughs> of this football team. Oh, we can speak about rotation because I heard some uh, oh, first round left oh, tackle. Yeah. 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 Let's do that guys. And we'll, no, we'll answer. John Knox. I didn't fly first class. I hear you guys inside on that. So you, you ready DK hit the bell. Yeah. 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 I am. Let's and we're back. Uh-huh. For anybody who doesn't know what we're talking about, by the way, Ramon uh, has a, a a commentating gig with the Tennessee Titans, yeah. and they, of course, as we all saw, played in London against the Ravens. Didn't do so well. Was not hot. Was not hot. Did not take care of business that was needed to be taken care of over there, whereas the, the Baltimore's did, most unfortunately. And Moan uh, was there for, wait, you're just a couple days, right? Uh, from Thursday, well, well fr- Friday morning, Saturday, Sunday, and came back Sunday right after the game, which is what most NFL teams do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Most. So, most do, unless you're the Jacksonville Jaguars. By the way, I, I don't know how they do it. I love, like, traveling international and going to different places and stuff like that. That trip is only fit for once every three to four years. There's no other way around it. I don't see how teams do it every single year. You're just living out of a box. You're doing so many different things. And then, of course, the time travel over, the time travel back, and it, it's different. I, I wasn't homesick at all because I love different cultures and stuff, but yeah, it was yeah. just different. And somebody asked the question, did I fly, fly first class? No, I'm team media now. <laughs> so I get in the back. I, they did give me the uh, extra space seats and stuff like that as far as legs go, but no, nah, I'm in the back with, with the with the workers, DK. <laughs> you're with the cargo, baby. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah that's uh, that's that's yeah. that's, a, that's a different world. It um, is. It's um, getting over there for the NFL and and for NFL's purposes for the future in Europe is is going to be a challenge. It's just it's going to be a real challenge for individuals. Yeah, and I think a lot of it's a lot of the decisions that get made by players. Look, there's only 32 NFL teams, 53 jobs. Do the math. Okay, the 32 X 53 is how many jobs there are in the world. Yeah, yeah. So it's not right. like they're not going to be able to stock the rosters. Mm-hmm. The question is, can you get the best of the best? Can you lure somebody else when they're when you're offering the same price as they are? Yeah. You yeah. follow me? That, and exactly, DK. Uh, and of course, over the weekend, too, some NFL business before we go Steeler business, DK. Um, you okay with a Super Bowl in London? I, I don't want one in London before there's one in Pittsburgh. Oh, really? Sorry. Okay. I, I don't fair. want one anywhere before there's one in Pittsburgh. It's obscene that there hasn't been one. And I don't care. I don't want to hear about roofs and hotels and nothing else. You put it in New York. You, you, you blew your cover completely, okay? <laughs> Not even New York, New Jersey, like in the swamplands. There's no roof on that place. There's yeah. nothing remotely resembling a roof on that place, MetLife Stadium. 
Yeah. You put it there. So you can put it anywhere. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt, man. It's just fascinating. Of course, it's coming out. They're going to they're gonna continually grow this league. There is no other way around it. Uh, I saw some people bringing up the um, bringing up the Mexico conversation again. That's going to happen. They're doing Germany already, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's that that's that's where this is going to go, and the NFL, to its credit, is is expanding out. Yeah, and, and that's always been a plan. And of course, uh, when people get upset with what Roger Goodell is being paid, well, that's because he's making this a world sport now. And again, I don't know if it's uh, going to grow to be like soccer, football, but it is definitely gathering more uh, more roots. DK is it's, it's 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 putting itself in a lot of different cultures right now. It's fun to see. Last time we went over, I think it was twenty thirteen. It's been a while. The Steelers will probably do sometime soon, DK, to make that international trek, whether that be Mexico City, Germany, it's been Ireland. Been a while. Been a while. It yeah, has du- been a while. Du- yep. Dublin's come up for sure. Dublin uh, has come uh, up. Just recently. Uh, yeah. With the, with the Steelers being invoked uh, in, in that regard. So, yeah. Look at I see a lot of people being like cynical about this and eh, I can't do this. America, America, America. Give me yeah. a break, man. It's, it's, it's a, going to happen. DK. But you're OK when your players stand up and hold that trophy and say that they're the world champs, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what a time, DK. What a time, man. My man uh, Jay Quest, by the way, who said said that he would not no Super Bowl outside America. His very next comment here is that he'd fly to Dublin. Dublin's awesome. Is it? Just awesome. So the only hiccup with the international game is time change. If that I don't know if it's gonna be possible to do it in London because that game over there started at 2 30 this past weekend, which is 8 30 central. Are we and probably be better for our schedule, just being real with you, are we into having a mid-morning Super Bowl game? Because no. <laughs> no. There we go again. There we go. Why are we even talking about this? Did you hear something? Well, well, right. I told you Roger Goodell said there will be a uh they're working in years to come, a Super Bowl. Oh, well, he has to say that. That that's just I mean, he said the same thing in Minneapolis when they built their place and whatever else, you know. Is but that's my point. Yeah. If I'll tell you what, I don't lay this one at the feet of Goodell or the National Football you League. Don't? To me, no, to me, okay. the Rooneys have to fight for this, and they don't. Okay. 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 All right, for sure. You know what else Pittsburgh's never had? The draft. Talk to me. Draft. Why? Draft. Why? That would be amazing, DK. In such a, a pure football city like Pittsburgh. Oh my. We've got the hotels. We've got the transportation. We've got the major airport. And I, I, I think we have some kind of lineage with football, right? Yeah, we do. We do. Okay, uh, just a little bit. Yeah. And if we can go to hot Vegas or even hot Nashville for that matter, you can go to Pittsburgh for sure. And it's not even going to be, it's not going to be hot. What am I talking about? Hot. It's not going to be hot in Pittsburgh around that time of the year. That'll be perfect in May. Absolutely perfect. It'll be beautiful. Yes, it would. April, May, whenever that's. You got to fight okay. for it, though. Nobody just comes and hands you stuff. Yeah, can can I also say though I would much rather keep the uh combine in Indy. I do think that's okay. I've heard that. I've heard that people like having it just in the one place that there are there are good logistical reasons for it including for the colleges and the kids and whatever. It's obviously a central location. The only problem I have with Indy is that we don't have any nonstop flights there or something. Is it to is Indy? Yeah. That's such a short flight, man. That's why we don't have one. We don't have one to Cincinnati either. I never even thought about that, dog. Yeah. I never even, I see behoove is the word of the day. Yeah, what's that so all about? People? I have no I missed that conversation earlier, DK. I don't know. But it, it's almost at the point that we uh we get to this uh, the only segment that matters here in a minute, DK, because there are some questions coming in and everything like that. There, you're right about that, Bob Schreiner. Yeah, but the, the the Lions built a new stadium and put a roof on it. They put a roof on it. Yeah, sure that's uh, that's that's the NFL pretending that the roof matters when in fact it didn't when they had it in New Jersey. When they went to New Jersey. When we come back, we're going to deal with the only segment that matters. We really and are. That's Hey Moan and how I've missed you guys. You guys missed me. And we're going to hit that like button while we're still here. At DK Pittsburgh Sports, we take pride in coverage that connects our city's fans to their favorite teams. Now, that connection's stronger than ever. Introducing our all-new state-of-the-art app. Find expert inside reporting and original podcasts. Check live box scores. Track the latest stats. Chat it up with our community of thousands of fans, all in one place. 
the new app from DK Pittsburgh Sports. Coverage that connects. To become a member of this channel, of this program, go to dkps.net slash join. Give it to you again. Eventually, we'll put it up on the screen. dkps.net slash join. Our favorite barber has produced five, count them, one, two, three, four, five gift memberships uh, for people. If you don't have one, if you don't have a membership yet, the barber will take care of the first five of you that accept one of the five. <laughs> you can figure out how to do that on your YouTube mechanism. Simon Chester comes in as a brand new member. And DeMond Brown gets us going today. He says, I've been to Dublin and Shannon, Ireland. It's dope. I bet you nobody over there calls it dope. I like the word dope. I say that often, by the way. DeMond, you're a man out of my own vocabulary, okay? Everything is usually dope to me, okay? And not in a bad way, in a good way. Keep going. I just want to see DeMond Brown walking the mean streets of Dublin, just looking around (laughs) saying, this is dope. And everybody's looking at him like, what? Yeah, it is. Go ahead. DeMond says, I would love to see the Steelers play in Mexico, but we should have the Super Bowl in London as soon as they have Premier League um, chips in the States. Yeah, I mean... I think this is just one of those cases where Rogers putting into play everything that has to come with this. Okay. In other words, when he goes to potential expansion towns or he's trying to get a new stadium built somewhere, or he's talking to officials in Las Vegas about taking the Raiders, he uses the Super Bowl constantly. Okay. Now that doesn't mean it goes into their regular rotation of Tampa, New Orleans, and the ones that get it, you know, every five, six years. But he said to London, look, if you're going to pay a billion dollars or two billion dollars for a franchise, we'll get you a game. We'll get you a Super Bowl. Yeah, no doubt about it, man. Uh, Again, it's a great bargaining chip to have. It's one of the world's bigger events when it comes down to sports, DK. I mean, it's fair to say that. Viewership shows it as well. And a lot of people will tell you overseas that, look, if the game was at a better time for them, then you would see a little bit more world growth, right? Right. They have leagues scattered around all these countries through the assistance of the NFL. And I was in the Tottenham Hotspur uh, Stadium this past weekend. How was that? Beautiful, huh? It's Brand new. Beautiful. Yeah. You know, the NFL had a play and help paying for that. And the oh, field. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so they're, DeMond, they're not going to invest if they're not willing to at least try doing more things. I loved it, DK. It was fun. But three to four years, DK, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's get a, a Steelers question going in here. Francesco says, "Hey, Moan, how in the hell are the Steelers going to cover Cooper Cup and Puka with this secondary? Yikes! Trying to get to their quarterback. That's going to be the only means of operating. It right? Really there. is. It, it really is. Puka Nakua, man, has turned into one of those guys. It seems as of late in the league, and I'm kind of glad to see that be the case too, DK. Just simply because. Um, it's it's good to see the league be carried on a little bit more with guys that have talent, and especially that. Um, that younger talent in the league, get to Matthew Stafford. He's a stick figure when you uh, – uh, yeah, I'm going to say this because I ain't playing. He's a stick in the mud when it comes to his mobility. Get after the rush. If they're playing tight and trying to get the ball out quick, play the sticks exactly as it says. I don't think this team, the Rams, have a barn burner when it comes down to speed. Cooper Cup is not a speed guy. Puka Nakua is not a speed guy. That's where you got to play. You got to play good, sound yeah. ball. Yes, DK, exactly. It's that. Mm -hmm. This ain't the same world championship team it was. Bob Schreiner points out that when they had the Super Bowl in Jacksonville, they didn't have enough hotel rooms. Jacksonville is not a big city uh, and had to bring in cruise ships to put up all the tourists. You know what problem we would not have in Pittsburgh? What's that, DK? Hotels. Because they had some world convention there. What was the name of it? That was the G20. We had the entire planet here. We have (laughs) hotel rooms for you, okay? And you know what? We don't need cruise ships, okay? (laughs) That if you really wanted to yeah. drag a cruise ship up the Ohio River, I guess we could at least talk. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely, man. Uh, Eric says, JPJ will cheer from the sidelines to get in their heads. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Let's start with Joey Porter Jr. before we get uh, to Broderick Jones here. Why yeah. would Joey Porter Jr., not just with his interceptions, but with his overall peripheral numbers, Bone, they don't even want to throw in his direction. Why is he not on the field? 
It's got to be some small DK. I just continue growth and learning of the of the defense. Like I what? know you're in there. You're in there for eleven years with this guy. Take us through it. What what <sighs> what is it that 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 shuts him off to somebody? What shuts him off as far as being able to get out on the field? A kid. A yeah. Kid. Stuff stuff that you're seeing in practice probably that you're not comfortable with, or the fact that teams uh, you have veteran guys this weekend and Cooper Cup and a guy proven now, Puka Nakua, who can make more plays for you, DK. And the fact that look, I'm not sure if Joy is getting beat with double moves. I'm not sure if he's getting uh if he fully understands how to play this defense. And, and do you say to yourself, if the guy in front of him is doing good enough and you're willing to ruin a rookie if he is exposed? Then you you don't want to live in that world, DK. I don't know this one as strong as I like to tell you as far as why they're not going to play him. All I can think is this. He's young, and you have guys you still got decent amount of contract money into, and you live in that world to say we're going to always have Joey Porter Jr. Let's not overexpose him. Are you guys opposed to overexposure? What if Joey Porter Jr. go out there and he has Cooper Cup and he gets broke off? You willing to live in that world too when you're trying to get wins? I, I just – I get it. I, Go ahead. See, I'm not sure that I do other than just to say something really vapid, like he's just going to go with the veteran. He's just going to go with the older guy. That's the only answer I got. Todd Mayberry says, Tomlin also said today that he doesn't look at the numbers. So what does he look at? What is the measuring stick? Actually, Todd, I want to be you know, fair with the context here. What Tomlin actually said, it was in response to a question about star receivers putting up big numbers against the Steelers. And his answer to that, which I thought was kind of a BS thing to say, is that he's not going to get into all kinds of gimmicky stats or whatever. That's not gimmicky. That's not that's not a, a gotcha stat. That's a really big deal. If the other team's best receiver is putting up 10 catches for 130 yards on you every week, that's not something that we have to go heavily research. It's right in front of our eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Maybe this is just what Joey Porter Jr. needs. A little bit more patience to play the technique, the skill of it. I know his numbers are what they are, but DK, you know this to him. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to just kind of drop it off right here when it comes to Joey Porter Jr., man. you can. It's okay to be a guy in a backup spot, and you can make a play or two because, look, they don't know how to play you, and you can, you don't know how to play them. But if he does get overexposed and then you ruin him for the rest of this year and years to come, I, like, like DK, Kendrick Green, mm -hmm. Th that's my only pushback. Kendrick Green was Don the guy from the get-go. And maybe because of Kendrick Green is why you're slower to go with Broderick and you're slower to go. That's truly my only understanding as to why he's not this week's starter and moving forward. Yeah, there's oh, – we'll get to those. We have a, a bunch more gifts coming we in. We do, mentioned, we mentioned earlier the barber with five – we got Simon Chester coming in with 10. And we got Daniel Pike who says, you know what? You got five. You got 10. I got Damn. 20. <laughs> so, yeah, we're off to a terrific start in that regard today. Uh, also welcoming Robert Tony as a, as a new member to the show. Mike's got one for Ramon's heart here. Hey, Moan, why don't we see ties anymore in the NFL? Uh, draws anymore. I, I'm so it could be one of two things: ties as in the end of the game, or draws as in run play. Oh, so that is still after my own from heart. London, and I'm thinking draws. You, you think see draw how that bridge. does? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, we can draw, get Veron Hayes on the show to, to describe that for us. I'm gonna go with the draw play. Well, it's because it's such a pass happy league most times. Even if, Pause. yeah, even <laughs> even if you are, are behind the sticks a little bit more, the draw is such a dead end play sometimes, and it's overexposing the court. I mean, the running back in those situations, you hardly ever get them. At least with the pass, if you're throwing the ball around, you can at least get the ball into guys' hands, and you have the ability to make a play or make somebody miss to get either backing them up or setting yourself up in a field goal position. That's kind of what I see. Moses, you're 100% correct right there. Stephanie says, is Tomlin willing to run the risk of upsetting people more? I mean, no youngsters and still yes to Canada. Stephanie, why? With all due respect, would yeah. you think that he cares? He don't. 
at I, all. I saw somebody adding, and I hope that person's in here because we had a look, real good exchange. Uh, they were talking about Coach Tomlin, and they added his Twitter page. And one of my friends, one of my real good friends, was being petty. It was like, you need to tell Ramon this, and he added me on this one. I was like, you guys are idiots to think that a Coach Tomlin is reading his Twitter, sees the news articles, or is replying back to no. almost anybody out there. DK, you've been around the team. Does Coach Tomlin have Twitter on his phone? Probably. Oh my goodness, no. When he ha he now he has an account, so there's people who think. I think you know, all coaches do now. Right, but he uses it for certain social purposes. He has some messages that he needs to send out. Sometimes it's condolences, congratulations, whatever it is. Uh, but believe me, he goes to somebody from media relations and says, "Hey, can you put a message up on that Twitter thing that yeah. says this and this to people?" And they write it up for him. He doesn't see a post in it. Him upsetting anybody is the last thing on his mind. It's all about winning. And uh, you posted uh, whose whose comments was that a second ago, DK, uh, about overexposing rookies. That can be a part of it. Already was another one of those corners that was put out there early, had some success, but never actually grew up. Right? Mm -hmm. Like it was Moses. Moses Mill. Artie Burns should have never been picked in the first. You say that all you want to. But already had every measurable that you can ask for when it comes down to him playing. Had the size, had the speed, played at a big time university, responsible adult because he adopted his little brother and stuff. That was the perfect picture moment of what you want out of a NFL young player, right, DK? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. We're going to get to Broderick Jones here. Would Jones have to face off against Aaron Donald? No, of course not. No, Aaron. He tried I mean, him, though. yeah, no, but that's <laughs> that's the other part is AD is going to bounce around wherever AD wants to bounce yeah. around because he's earned that license uh, from the Rams uh, yeah. as he should have. As he should. Uh, but you know, let's get to uh, let let's get to Broderick Jones here. I'm yeah. going to find here's a, here's one from Leroy. He says he says, "Hey Moan, what do you think? Why?" Do you think Mike Tomlin is so steadfast in his process of not starting rookies? We're post by already. Who are we helping or proving something to at this point? You got to understand, like it, his job is to manage this team and the growth of players and their well-being too, even in their careers, right? Uh, the same way I was electing to wanting to do the show yesterday, and you, DK, warned me, Moan. I don't know if that's going to be short. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I don't know if that's the right thing for you to do, man. <laughs> Uh, and that's what you want in a career. You got to think. Coach T knows Joey Porter Jr. from a baby. Legitimately. He watched that guy. I saw Joey Porter Jr. train in our facility with our strength and conditioning coach, Coach Guimont. Mm -hmm. I saw those things with his boys. And I think I'm going to lean on this. I think he knows him, what he probably needs to get out of him to make him tick a little bit too, DK. He know how to agitate him. He don't run hot like his dad to where you just say sick him to Joey Sr., and Joey was going to go sick him. I think if you hold Joey Porter Jr. back a little bit, deprive him of starting, not playing, starting, then you make him want it a little bit more. Maybe he needs to learn how to work a little bit harder. This is my speculation, but me knowing Coach Tomlin as to why and how he does things, he plays the mind games with guys to get the most out of them. He actually told me this in my evaluation. We knew, Mona, if we told you you couldn't do something, you was going to go do it. We knew if we brought somebody in, Mo, to challenge you at a position, we knew that you was going to beat them out every single time because you got better and you rise to the occasion in those situations. It sucks as a fan because here's the thing. Is Joey Porter Jr. going to save your year? Is he the answer to saving your year? Uh, see, that's that's where uh, there's a lot of things and and methods that this coach has that I really like Okay, and, and have respected for a long time. There are also some that where I just go, listen, I understand that there are only 17 games and that in your head, all you can ever be focused on is winning the very next one. However, if you're out to win a championship, it's also part of your responsibility as a head coach to make sure that your team is getting better with each passing week and maximizing its full potential and sitting your higher ceiling guys down earlier in the year just doesn't 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 make sense to me okay if you believe and you probably do cuz you traded up for him that Broderick Jones is going to be a better left tackle than Dan Moore then you play him now okay mm. because you want to win isn't what's the goal again over there Moan? The, what's the goal i i i understand what the goal is to win win what win championships right yeah you don't do that with your second best guy 
Okay. Okay. All right. That's all I'm saying. I, I love okay. this. I love it. We didn't even know no, no, Roger. No, 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 just no. I love this because we're actually on opposite ends of this thing. I, gr- I, I, I get where you're coming from and agree with what you're saying, but I don't believe in that right there right now, DK, as far as saying he's the future of it. Well, the right now has, DK, and we both have agreed upon this. Dan Moore has played well enough to not lose his spot. That's also the other thing of it, too. It's not like this is a preseason thing. If if Broderick Jones was better than him in the preseason and he beat him out, then, DK, we got mm-hmm. a different story. But in the middle of the season, when you are atop of the AFC North, right now this team has a wild card uh, slot as far as the playoffs is concerned. I don't think it warrants saying you deserve this, Broderick, because you are the first round and you are future right now. When, when Dan Moore isn't, he isn't atrociously bad. We can't say he's been a reason this team lost. No, but Broderick Jones is coming off of a literal pristine showing against Baltimore. Zero pressure, zero hits, zero sacks over there, and he was okay on the run blocking as well. I just Philip has a conspiracy theory here. There's no world beaters on the Rams at defensive end, so it would be ideal to get best value by showcasing Dan Moore. They don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to showcase Dan Moore. No, He's going to be a free agent anyway. He's going to be this, all right. This isn't baseball. You're not putting a guy out there to show off before the July 31 so, deadline. Okay, all right. Let, let's let's go a little deep state here, okay? You ready right. for this, DK? Go ahead. Go ahead. Since we're on the project thing, I had a couple star, DK. Let me see what else I had up there, mm-hmm. too. Is this right here from Cat Manna to Hey Mon Wise, Tomlin living in his fears and not starting Joy Porter Jr. and Broderick. I had that one, DK. Uh, I like that. There you go. You just put another one up, mm-hmm. DK. Uh, Dan Moore, Joey Porter Jr. after the bye. Also, Matt Canada didn't get fired. He's still your offensive coordinator. There we go. All right. <laughs> so, Broderick Jones starting. Here's the thing. Let's, Like I said, let's go deep state for a second, DK. All right, story time. Are you willing to bench Dan Moore if you know you still have him next year, DK? And you also might have to make a decision at right tackle next year for I- Dan Moore. Yes, you are. Yeah, because here's the thing. They need to make up their minds where they want this offensive line to be. Not Sunday in Los Angeles, but where they want it to be. Okay, so I've seen already a couple of people have mentioned here that, all right, we'll just put Dan Moore out there if you like him so much and and sit Chooks. Okay, right. At right tackle. Yeah. And then from there, get Mason Cole out of there and move James Daniels to center and all this other stuff. And everybody wants to shuffle everything all over again. And I'm not even going to comment on that. However, what I do feel strongly about is wherever you think this team will win a Super Bowl, put those guys there and then go win football games now. That's all I'm saying. I would also say this, though, DK. I don't know if I've seen Coach Tomlin gift a guy a starting position because another guy's gotten injured. If Dan Moore had played horribly bad, then I'd justify it. I'd be like, okay, bye week, we're making a change. I can't justify that and knowing how Coach Tomlin work at times, that he's going to say, Dan, sorry, he he's just a better fit than you right now at this spot just because you got hurt. I don't, I don't think he's going to operate like that one. I just don't. And maybe that's a an emotion thing of his, and there shouldn't be emotions involved in it. But Dan Moore hadn't been that bad, DK, to actually warrant saying, yeah, let's go with the rookie. Brandon Clark says, Kenny's looked more comfortable in the pocket with Broderick Jones at left tackle. There's, 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 I mean, there's all kinds of reasons why he could. It's, it's one ahead. game. Again, no, 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 no. Let me say this. But Let it's me go his there. Only game. This is me. This is me. It's one thing to be a starter in this league, right? That means you've earned it. You've played for. It. But it's also to remain a starter in this league is also a thing too that that lasts in this league. Everybody loves the backup until the backup gets in, and then there's more film, and you break him down. Then you realize this is why that guy's the backup. Now, I'm not saying I'm afraid to put a rookie out there at all. But what I'm saying is to put him in the game down this stretch that they're about to go through and say, run with the young guy that don't have that experience, don't know how to study film the way you need to and still growing as a pro, cool. And this team isn't in a place right now, DK, to where you kind of, to me, 
to say we're building for the future with youth. Do you have a lot of good youth talent on this team? Yes. But this isn't the portion of the season where you say we are now focusing on the youth. I just can't see it. I know, but it, 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 it sounds like you were with this guy for 11 years, and, and I get that. Because you're all you're thinking about, and you do the same thing. And I say this with immense yeah. respect. Yeah. Is you're thinking about Sunday's game. I how do you beat the, game. How do you beat the Rams? How do you beat the Rams? And there's no further discussion. There's no further dialogue. And to me, that gets that gets in the way of unleashing hell in December. Okay, because when are you going to make these younger guys better? They're not going to improve in practices. They're just no, not. Maybe a little, a little bit, a little bit. Okay, but not much. Yeah. And and uh, now you have you have these two guys, both of them coming off outstanding performances, and then yeah. you tell them go sit down. Yeah, DK. Uh, again, what would you rather it be, DK? You you'd rather it just be the young guy all the way? I'm not in on that one, especially not okay. off of an injury. Not off of an injury, DK. I can't justify oh, it being off about of an Dan injury. Moore's feelings. I don't no. care about that. Okay. That's the league, though. Okay, we're talking about feelings, and we're not even firing the offensive coordinator. You think he's gonna bench a player? <laughs> no, I no, love it. man, I love it too because we're both right on this one. We in are, a, in a way, I could see we're, that we're, we're both right on this one. I, I just, I don't know. This one's gonna be super fascinating. If Dan Moore goes out there and play bad this week, after what you've seen from Broderick Jones, right? Th- okay, there we go. So okay. we're in the same conversation. All right. Zach we're just Costanza on different roles. Comes in with a contribution and says, I like that Dan Moore gets to start this week with the best edge threats we will face out of the way. He'll either play well or Broderick gets the nod. And Zach did put that on the screen before you said it. And I you said your Zach. thing before you saw Zach. So you I guys didn't see Zach thing. Very okay. much. And by the way, the Rams do have some good rushes at outside edge. They have a rookie. And the only reason I know is because he went to UT. That's up for defensive rookie of the week this week. He had a good one, I think, six TFLs or some crazy stat. They got some rushes. And, of course, you got Aaron Donald out there, too. It's not going to be a, a, a walk in the park against the oh, Rams. Don't oh, sue. No. Do not think that. No, Caesar says first time super chatting. I'm visiting Memphis for my honeymoon. That's on obviously on the other side of Tennessee. Yeah, loving the fall weather down here. Just waiting for Steelers football to be back. We appreciate the contribution. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, one Caesar man. Go get you some ribs, man. Absolutely. Mike Hoover says, "DK, you're the man." Question. I love Naj. Man, always have we seen have seen we drafted him, but if Jalen continues at this rate, could you see Najee's future in Pittsburgh coming to a close? He's got that fifth-year option coming up. Uh, running backs are – that's tough. That's a tough world to live in as a running back. If Jalen rises up, you know, if he's oh. not your – let's put it this way. If Najee isn't your number one running back by season's end, why would you exercise a fifth-year option on a running back? So, so we had this question too, right? Uh, we talked about this, I feel like, before we broke last week going into mm-hmm. the game week. Yep. The thing about Najee is you want him win, DK. When they get cold outside and you got to turn people down, break you pound, pound at the rock a little bit more. I'm hoping we see second half Najee because that's kind of what we saw last year too. I'm not out on Najee, mm. but Najee does have mm. to get a little bit more pop in his run before Jalen Warren does kind of take him over. We're not going to act like this hasn't happened before. Yeah, we, we're uh, we're trying. The boss is trying to get everybody to make sure that they hit the like button and subscribe and everything else. Here we have roughly five hundred people who are online right now who have yet to hit the like button. Come on, y'all! What are we doing, man? You got to hit that like button. What if we read everybody's names? That'd be a yeah. boring show. Did we have a conversation about Coach T tanking? I saw I saw that come up right there. I'm not sure if the chat the chat says its own world, and I love it. Coach T ain't tanking ever. I don't know what that can't. I don't believe that either. There's no way if y'all are having that conversation, this is going to be something serious and wild. It's a good thing we have Jim Fairfield to remind us that there's business to tend to here. And that's because at the get go cafe and market, quality is at the core of every menu item. Three expert chefs fine tune every detail so that every sub burger, salad, wrap, drink, and app is crafted for what they uniquely and cleverly refer to as craveability, which isn't even a word. Order your favorite entry at the get-go cafe and market today. Better believe it. Something I was taught in college once, the linguistics professor who said there's no such thing as correct or incorrect language. Really? If 
If the other person understands what you're saying or what your meaning is, you've communicated. End of language process. Who said this to you? Because people try to correct me on the radio all the time. I'm gonna go oh, ahead I, and put this I, down, I, I do it. I, I'm, it? I do it. it it's. So, it's it's just a it's just a, a professor at Duquesne about about to write it down right here DK. No, really, if you say something and you say it completely incorrectly per whatever standards are out there, whether it's Oxford Dictionary or Strunk and White for those of you who've who've, who've taken writing classes, uh, if if you say it yeah. and the other person knows what you meant, even if it's nonverbal, you have communicated. The process is over. It is complete. That's it. That's funny you say that because me and my brother, Ron, we have a saying, DK, and it's been picking up a little bit with people that hear us say it. Like, man, you want to go, you know, go wherever this weekend, and we'll say, you know what? That might be do it. Yeah, what the hell is that? It might like, be do it. But you know what? It worked. <laughs> it worked. And, it, and if you guys, and if you and Ron are sitting at the main table and you yeah. look over at the uncle's table, okay, and you see, you make eye contact with one of these people at the uncle's table and you just go, do, do, do you know what I'm gonna say in this? I, I'll hmm. be like, "Hey, hey, Ron, I call him Savage. Hey, Savage, you think these <laughs> folks that don't have the green letters on here need to get a membership? And you know what he gonna say to me, DK? Hmm. That might be do it. That might yeah. be do it. <laughs> <laughs> might be do it. Yeah. Uh, we've also got TJ pointing out that behoove is a word as well. If if Tomlin yeah. used it 15 times or if he used it zero times. It would behoove all of us <laughs> to understand what it is and why it is that he's trying to communicate with us that way. Exactly, man. Like yep. Luke, Luke wants he wants Glenn Thomas today. Okay. Now, Glenn has nothing to say. Okay? He, he never does. But you know what a lot of the fan base will say if they decide to make that change to Glenn Thomas? Mm. It might be do it, DK. It might be do it. <laughs> but see, I hold Glenn Thomas up. <laughs> And the message is conveyed. Like, we don't need words. <laughs> we don't need words, DK. We don't need words. It, it doesn't, man. Um, I saw one that was real good, DK. I wanted to get to in a Hand second. Hand over though. fist. See, I'm going to stay on this language thing just for a second. Hand over fist says, ask the French about the fluidity of the language. The French language in France morphs and changes all the time. Yeah. You know where it doesn't? Where? In, in Quebec, in, in Montreal. Quebec. There are people who will tell you, boy, the French get mad when you say this, but the the the, the French that's spoken in in Montreal or in Quebec City or any Trois Rivières or any of the, of the of the significant cities in Quebec, but especially in the outlying areas, is a purer form of French than what they speak in bleeping France. Oh, wow. Why? Because it just morphs, it changes all the time. It's just like slang, man. This is what also yes. is going to change, too. It's slang, exactly. Yes. Uh, broken English, whatever you want to call it, DK. Brian comes with a contribution, DK. I kind of want to go here real quick to finish mm -hmm. off that conversation we had about Broderick Jones and Dan Moore. Moore hasn't been that bad, but not that good. Exactly. My What's he done? That's why I have no safety here. My extension is this. You only saw Broderick Jones for one game. So if Broderick goes out in this game against the Rams and gives up two sacks, you want Dan Moore back? Okay, well, you say because one game. Because all of this is hypotheticals, DK. You can say one game, but I'll come back at you with his known pedigree. Like if, if Nate Herbig goes out there at right guard and plays a great game, you're putting him right back on the sideline whenever James Daniels is healthy, right? Mm -hmm, you don't even mm -hmm. think about it. Why? Pedigree. Pedigree. Well, I'm here. Broderick Jones is out there because you know he's a 14th overall pick. You traded up to get him, and he goes out there and does that. You believe and have reason to believe that there's even more. Yeah, it's it's just different. It's it's more. It's about more than just one game. And and, and is this though too? Uh, where was it at? But but Teresa said, but how do we see more of Jones if he doesn't play again? It's up now. The pressure's really on because you saw a really good game out of Broderick Jones. That, right, that's what we're – no pressures, no sacks, run blocking was good. So here's it is. It really is control your own destiny when it comes down to Dan Moore. The moment Dan Moore takes a step back is the moment that Broderick Jones is in forever. I just don't see a reason that's warranted to, okay. to, to bench Dan Moore right now. Okay, so let's say Moore goes out there and the Rams, as has been discussed here already today, don't have any great defensive ends. 
and Moore gets the job done. Nobody really notices him. He didn't necessarily do anything special, and he just holds on to it into perpetuity, and the kid never gets any better. DK, again. We can do this you, all I'm, I'm going to use your own words against you. Pedigree is why he's going to get better. All right. All right. If we believe that, and I know you do and I do too. Yes, I'm not against I actually him. do. Oh, I I'm not that. against Roger no, I Jones. That. I know that. But S4, I'm not, yeah. S4000 says, hey, Moan, what's the difference between Roderick Jones slash Dan Moore versus Kenny slash Mitch last year? Tomlin made the QB switch to Kenny. Why won't he make this switch? Because I feel like we saw Mitch not gaining, getting any better. I think what the way people are fascinated with starting Broderick Jones is because nobody knows what they're watching. Not a lot of people knows what they're watching. When they're watching left tackles or tackles and guards play in centers. That's the other thing. You're fascinated with the idea of this guy's the first rounder. And the last first rounder you saw come through, David DeCastro. And before him, Marquise Pouncey. And you're fascinated with that when all of us have, have said, like, Dan Moore is good enough right now and has been getting the job done against a guy like Miles Garrett that has been a monster since he played Dan Moore. And your guy Dan Moore stopped him. I am so tired of Miles Garrett. Uh, what's what's happening? Why are you why are you tired of him? Just I saw in, they got into just, a fight yesterday. It's just in general, just everybody singing his praises, and he doesn't he doesn't actually get anything done. It's like he's out there playing for the PFF trophy. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, you, well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Josh Richard comes in with five gift subscriptions. Make sure if you don't have, uh, I'm sorry, membership. If you don't have a membership, make sure that you have that open uh, to accept memberships. Uh, Josh will take care of you there. That's very much appreciated here. H Hodge says, the standard is the standard. The standard needs to be playing your most athletic players and Mike Tomlin also claims the only way for their growth is in stadiums. Well, that can't happen when they're on the bench. Very valid point. Very valid point. I just have to say here, though, that Dan Moore told us reporter types yesterday that he was practicing with the first teamers and that he believed he was going to be the starter Sunday night or Sunday in Los Angeles. Yeah. Tomlin didn't say that today. He said it was an if situation so let's i i think more is i don't see why you would have more practice with the starters but let's just see how that all plays out before we totally freak out where it relates to that specific situation where joey porter jr is concerned that's different terrell austin said he's not starting yeah well here we go with this one too from jeff that also says this and thanks for the contribution for sure too jeff says more's bad players while we drafted broderick you went and drafted Broderick because he was that close to you and he actually fell a little bit too. And here's the thing that it, that it boils down to. You're in a situation where a lot good offensive linemen are hard to find. And when you have a guy like Broderick or the team that I cover here in Nashville that was able to pick up Peter Skaronsky from Northwestern when they were originally going to pick a quarterback, you go mm -hmm. get the big boy because it's more, it's more advantageous for you to think they're going to be successful. That's why you went and got Broderick Jones because to get a franchise left tackle means that it's hard to get by. And the Steelers don't usually draft that early that soon. Broderick did slip just a little bit. He did. I would I would beg you guys to go at, to, to do this. I think it was Carolina that drafted a first-round draft pick um, a couple years ago, DK. I'm trying to pull up his name real quick, man. I'm going to the 2022 team. Give me one second. Akim Ekwanu. Akeem Ikwano, he's having a terrible year. Mm. He's having a terrible year. They're 0-6 on the season right now. You can't live in your fears, no. But here was a bona fide draft pick, top 15 draft pick. Six. He was number six overall. And he's having a terrible showing at left tackle right now. Roderick looked good. He says uh, quality koalas. And no, I don't think anybody's going to argue that, including Moan. Can't argue that. He did. Oh, he did. But, but what I always say, to be a starter for one game is cool. But it has to happen time and time and time and time and time and time again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hanover Fist likes the line. There are not a lot of human beings on the planet who can play on an NFL line. That is true. It's very true. It's a very, very, very freaky that's short you, list. That's why you go get Broderick when he's right there in front of you and no other team has that uh, No other team has that need, and Pittsburgh did. Now, we're going to take a couple more today here. I love this back and forth, y'all. And I've seen some people in the chat who's like, Moan, I love you, <laughs> but I disagree with you. And, and yes, 
Peter Skaronsky is starting right now, left guard for this team down here. Yeah, I mean that's and that was I think everybody projected him that way, you know, coming into the draft. That's a that's a player that a lot of people had even higher uh, on some draft boards than where Tennessee ended up taking him. Uh, Blake points out that maybe more is a backup Sunday because he's hurt, whatever. You don't need conspiracy theories we don't, here. We don't need that. Yeah, yeah, we don't see. We'll see. Now, T, it says, uh, no one you know says T.J. Watt could finish with 70 sacks this season and PFF would still rate Miles Garrett higher. <laughs> You're not even coming close to telling the full story, though. T.J. could finish with 170 sacks. <laughs> Miles Garrett could take the rest of the season off and he would still grade higher. Yeah, he he would, man. They love him. I get it. Oh, my God. I get it. I mean, I don't know if he's in on this with Collinsworth or what, you know? it's an, Maybe it's an Ohio thing. Maybe he talks to him often in, in the media. I don't know, man. I will say this as it relates to as, as it relates to PFF in general and, and especially pass rushing. When your formula is producing these results, your formula is not correct. Yeah. And I'm being completely serious when I say this. In other words, if you're giving Miles Garrett a win, as, what, as they call it, pass, pass rush win, why am I getting balloons again? <laughs> I came in with the super sticker. Papa Ray, somebody oh, must have okay. uh, did a contribution and it came in. That oh, way. okay. That yeah, freaked yeah, yeah, me yeah. out. I got balloons. That means it, you're you're valuing something that is not as valuable in football. Beating the guy in front of you and not getting a result isn't as valuable as getting the result. So true. Okay? So there is a reason that NFL executives, grown bleeping men, will look at sack totals and say, or forced fumbles or passes defense, all the stuff that TJ brings you, interceptions, and say, that has a price that we're willing to pay. Yeah, yeah. And and your formula is busted. That's what I'm saying. And here's the pro tip, too. Unless a pressure, DK, is affecting the actual throw of the quarterback. It did nothing. It means nothing. No. No. That, it, that, it, it impressed somebody on film. You, oh, you got close. Oh, oh, you got close. Oh, yeah. Good job. You're getting there, dude. You're you, getting there. You're getting there. And you know what almost gets you, DK? <clears throat> almost will get you most certainly fired, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's what... <laughs> Am I lying? No, the Carolina Panthers are probably having a whole lot of studies of almost plays. Because if we lost a, a few <laughs> games, man, we lost a lot of games by three, DK. Mm -hmm. We still lost those games by still less than three them. points. Yeah, Funny how that works. I, I kind of want to end this one real quick, uh, DK, too. Not not the show, but the the, the Broderick, Dan Moore, and what was it, Levi Wallace, and JPJ with this. Okay. Blake, who, oh, Blake why, why yeah. are you at the uncle's table, man? What's that all about? What's that all about? Because I'm going to elaborate on this just real quick. No conspiracy with what Coach Tomlin's doing. I think it is just the head games. A young fella. Go earn it. I, I, I do. I'm leaning on that, DK. When we're talking about why Broderick and Dan, why JPJ and, you know, not playing, not starting. I think it's a little bit of that. He just doesn't want to see a comfort. He doesn't want to see a comfort level th that shows up in practice. Like, oh, look at me. I'm it now. You know, I, I mean, I, I get, I get that part, okay. Except that they're getting you results when you put them out there. Yeah, one okay. of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, you know? I believe it. Yeah, I digress. Brian says, "Old and slow at cornerback doesn't win championships, and it, and it doesn't." And Patrick Peterson is going to move to the inside. He is. I don't know why that isn't happening right now. Yeah. It might be a Cooper Cup thing. It might be a who knows. Okay, it might be. A, <laughs> it might be opponent specific. It just might. Yeah, so they'll wait be. until they can put uh, they can put Joey Porter Jr. out there against somebody they can feel really sure that he's going to have success and build off it. Yeah, um, that might be the way this goes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Demond here gets the last word for the day. Says uh, whoever the backup center is, they need to get ready. Aaron Donald better than Mason Cole. Great show, guys. We love it. Um, backup center is. I believe James Daniels. Uh, I don't, there's not that many people that would agree with me on that one. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, you could also have Nate Herbig over there. Uh, Spencer Anderson's in the mix. But your center is Mason Cole. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. It is. just is. It just is. Am I wrong, Moan? Yeah, it is. It's Mason Cole. Uh, we don't know what Mason's dealing with. We'll see what it's going to look like this week. 
if, if there's any hesitation into him wanting to, you know, play big boy ball, this weekend ain't it. I'll tell you that much, especially with this guy that's from Western Pennsylvania himself by the name of Aaron Donald. If there's a, a chink in the armor, it'll be exposed this weekend, DK. Man, I love watching AD play. We have to spend some time talking about that this week. Yeah, I'm good with that. Absolutely. There's just I, I have some AD stories for you for when I was covering him in college. Yeah, uh, that uh, that I'd love to share. This just, it, man, he could have been a Steeler. I don't know. In some alternate reality, I'm not saying the Steelers had a crack at him. I'm just saying, you know, I've heard some conversation around that. The, the oh. one they they couldn't have got him that year. No, 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 no. They couldn't have got him that year, and it's fascinating because everybody knew Aaron Donald's playmaking ability. But yeah. here's the thing. Nobody knew where they could play Aaron Donald. You had to recreate what you were doing. You had to you had to do a full Troy. You and had you, to say, we have no idea what to do with this guy, but I'll be damned if he's not playing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he went, what, number 11? Yeah. yeah. He went. Yeah. So the Steelers couldn't have got him that year, man. Uh, and I will say this about AD. He needs a l- little bit more help because them doubles and triple teams are happening at a high rate, and it – the last game I saw of him, it just looked like it's, he was it's tired. Farcical. Yeah, it's farcical. It, it looked like he's tired, man, because he debated retirement, right? He's been doing it for a long time, and and it's a lot like whenever you, you get to the point in baseball where you're so spectacular, they just walk you every time. Like, we'll let somebody else beat us. We're not letting you beat us. Yeah, he's getting doubled in triple teams, man. Mm-hmm. That sucks for him yeah. because – Ain't much he can do about that because you're not about to eat on our plate, man. No, no. Let's uh, let's bring it back. Let's bring it back, man. A great debate this day, y'all. Yeah, you like that, huh? Y'all got it. <sighs> Sticky B. I don't know, fellas. Three consecutive work days without the show made me awfully cranky. Is that what behooves you guys today? Huh? Yeah, that's what behooved them. <laughs> no doubt, DK. I'm glad to be back doing this show. That's yeah, sure. we're also a little cranky because there hasn't been any Pittsburgh football for a while. It, it's it's different. Bowen, you you mean you over you're over there enjoying a big, big event yeah. for, for an NFL game and an NFL weekend and everything. Uh I'm genuinely curious as to how how the fans showed for that, and and I know how it tends to go. It's it's military people that are over. It's not like random regular British dude drops yeah. a couple of pounds to go to the game. It's so and so is serving in the military from Tennessee or Nashville or something, yeah. right? Yeah, and th- this crowd though look very uh, pedestrian, though. Oh, I would okay. say that. That's actually uh, good. That he means it, that in a good way. I do. I mean it. And by the way, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium is right in the middle of a neighborhood. It's incredible. They all are over there. They, and that's I, how they do it. And and that's what I was going. I see how and why they love their soccer clubs because they are a part of the community. It's like Wrigley Field. Wrigley it's, Field is Wrigley Field is really the only one in America where you just you have it just surrounded by like houses. Yeah. 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 It, it, imagine putting a stadium in the middle of the strip district. You know what I'm saying? Or in the middle of the south side. <laughs> You're on the south side slopes. On the south side slopes. Like, can you imagine it being on, like, Carson, East Carson? That's essentially what Tottenham Hotspur Stadium was. And it was a lot of neighborhood people there. You could tell, DK, in the games, too. Uh, and I'll say this, too. That transit to get in and out of the games, we need a little bit more transit system. Well, I'll say in the south. Oh, the trains but- and whatnot. Actually, the whole United States says when you get over to Europe and you're using their trains and you realize we don't have anything like that here, it feels like we're the ones in the Stone Ages. It does. You know, I love my car, ZK, my truck. Right. But to be able to be 30 minutes with no traffic and a a five minute walk at a place that I want to go to sign me up for that one. Yeah. Sticky B says is Lambo the closest thing to that in the States part of it. I don't know if you've been to Lambo in a while, Moan, but they're really starting to build that up. Are like the, they? Oh, the Packers bought some land, and they've got a casino and these other the entertainment district and everything. It doesn't look like yeah. Green Bay, Wisconsin at all. Like yeah. Green Bay used to just be Lambeau Field, a bunch of those little white row houses, and then a McDonald's. Yeah. And there's yeah. this one gas station, and that's Green Bay. No. Nah. <laughs> yeah, that's very true, too. But they're building it up now. I get that some of that money that Aaron Rodgers made them. Yeah, it's in the middle of Tottenham in London. Yeah, it's like that's what I said. It's like a neighborhood. 
That's what oh, I yeah. essentially said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I said. Uh, by yeah. the way, Randy, they do have this sport. It's called rugby. <laughs> oh, also, they tackle a hundred times a game in soccer. It just means something else. Ah, oh, boy. Okay. okay. Sliding tackle. Sliding tackle. Got you. Yeah. Don't be myopic, people. Big world. Big you know, world. get out and enjoy it. You know, we have we say this in Pittsburgh all the time. There's people who live on the south side who've never been to the north side. They have not. <laughs> okay, and vice versa. It's the strangest don't, don't... thing I ever heard. And you got one crack on this this planet, and then you're worm food. You know, go see things. Worm you know, <laughs> go see things. Worm food, DK. Oh yeah, Buffalo too. I don't want to. Okay. Uh, New Buffalo. England's like that too. New England has some of that. Yeah, but they bought that land in the middle they, of nowhere. They, they did that just for the parking, and then they put up their own entertainment thing and whatever else here. Uh, yeah. Absolutely, DK. That is hilarious. Yeah, DK. Richard challenges me to expand my own horizons and enjoy team handball. I enjoy it. I you, just think it looks like the easiest thing I've ever seen. You and Dolly would be y'all would bond big time over handball because she told you that's our favorite sport or one of her favorite sports. Well, she played team handball, which is why she claims that it was hard. Ah, oh, gotcha. Okay, she's she's biased. I it get harder it. Harder than anything you played. Harder than anything you played. Mm, you yeah, played. she said to the eleven-year NFL guard. Boo! Tell her I said boo. <laughs> no, that was for, for, for you. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, now she's claiming you weren't the target of that. Oh, yeah, sorry, Dolly. That's for you, DK. I ain't to... in. Uh, TJK, we talked about this earlier. Uh, yeah. The time constraint is what we're going to be the biggest issue. We did. Guys, we really appreciate everybody um, and your patience and everything else. And uh, it, it's great to have Ramon back. And it's great to have a show back. But it, more than anything, it's great to just have good dialogue on sports. You can disagree with stuff the way I we like did. It. You know? I like the disagreement. It I made, do. It, he made me think about my position, and he challenged me to think harder about it. Okay? You did the same thing to me. It was like, well, what hell? Why aren't we playing Dan Broderick Jones in? I did. I had that thought. And that's what good, healthy debate is. And maybe if you do that, you come up with something that's – you don't have to necessarily agree, but maybe it makes you think a little bit harder about your position and, and makes it even sharper, crystallizes it, right? Yeah. Uh, Dan Moore, you team Broderick over there, DK. That's right. <laughs> all right, guys. We'll do it tomorrow, all right? See y'all good people. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.